Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for coming out. Um, this is my uh, presentation of my thesis, uh, Honors in the Major uh, Project, that was conducted in Dr. David Harris's lab. So let's talk about prion diseases. Um, there are this class of neurodegenerative diseases, which means that over time, your brain cells die. Um, and this can lead to dementia or memory loss, um, and also inevitably death. So you might have heard of mad cow disease, which is one example. Um, there's also uh, many other diseases in humans, like Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. Um, and they're caused by this really novel class of infectious uh, particles called prions. So unlike many other uh, pathogens, like bacteria or viruses, there's no uh, genetic material. There's no DNA. Um, this is just purely a protein. So this was actually a controversial um, theory until pretty recently. So in these diseases, uh, the cellular prion protein, or PRPC, um, is just constantly produced by our cells for you know, their normal cellular function. But over time, um, somehow a PRP uh, SC, or scrapey form, uh, which is misfolded, um, is introduced. And as you can see in this figure over here, um, it actually induces the misfolding of the normal PRPC, kind of like a virus converts healthy cells into virus-producing factories. It kind of allows, um, it propagates using the normal PRPC. And so this PRP SC is toxic. It accumulates and it overwhelms your cells like uh, protein degradation systems. And this uh, sort of prion-like misfolding and propagation is also implicated in other neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. So obviously, anti-prion drugs are an important avenue of research that we want to look at. Um, so anti-prion drugs are compounds that alleviate prion disease, obviously. Uh, one in, that we have discovered in our lab is Alacridar. These work by, of course, fighting against the pathogen, that they act by uh, lowering the amount of PRP scrapey, uh, which is the toxic form that I mentioned before. So there are a couple of mechanisms that this can work by. This can, they can work by reducing the conversion rate of the normal PRPC to the PRP scrapey. It can increase the rate of degradation, and it can also decrease the amount of PRPC, which, is, uh, which decreases the amount that can be turned into the toxic PRPSE. So here on the, in these figures is just um, cu a couple of figures that explain um, Alacridar's effects. On the bottom left over here, you can see this is a dose response curve, and Alacridar um, reduces the amount of PRP scrapey. So the question is, how does Alacridar affect PRPSC? There's, uh, if we answer these questions about mechanisms, we might uh, be able to elucidate more um, just understanding about the biology, but also this might uh, allow us to look at things like uh, more druggable targets. So, of course, our hypothesis is that um, Alacridar increases the rate of degradation. This is somewhat consistent with some findings that we have in the lab. So, as for methods, um, what uh, I did in this project was look at these N2A cells, which are this line of uh, mouse cells. We grow them in culture or kind of like in petri dishes, essentially. Um, and so, we introduced this foreign, this custom DNA so that they would only make the pure PC protein when we added this compound DOX. If we uh, don't control, allow us to control the pure PC production, then um, it'll always, uh, their cells will always create pure PC, and therefore um, there's always going to be more pure PSE that gets converted. So this allows us to just look at the level of pure PSE over time without worrying about how much is being made. How we measured was uh, using a technique called a Western blot. All it does is just measure the protein level that we have in our cells, um, and it uses an antibody to bind to the protein, and this, prote uh, this antibody is bound to an enzyme that releases light. The more light there is that we detect, the more protein there is. And we compare the decay of PRPC and PRPSC levels over time uh, under, the comp uh, under the influence of this drug. So gene expression uh, is actually this, is how uh, cells make protein. Um, so this was a, a graph that we looked at. Um, I created these uh, B5 docs and C1 doc cells um, and characterized the B5 doc cells earlier. Um, this took over a semester and a half, but um, as you can see here, there's more intensity, there's more uh, pure PC detected in the C1 doc cells versus the B5 doc cells. Um, so the B5 doc cells that I characterized for about a semester and a half, um, I decided to kind of switch away from because we need to see a higher level of expression. Um, this gives us more resolution. Um, if there's any like small variations with a you know, small amount of pure PC in the beginning, 
then it's hard for us to be able to know uh, if that's due to like you know biological variability or if this is due to an actual effect. So when moving on, moving forward with these C1 doc cells, um, we looked at the effect of the uh, alacridar on the half-life of PRPC, um, and as you can see here, there is a really no noticeable effect over time, uh, over these t different time points, uh, the condi between the top condition and the bottom condition, with, which is control and the drug. There's not much difference within the sort of uh, time points. Um, as you can see in this graph here, which uh, kind of explicitly compares them on the same graph, there's really no uh, change uh, that's significant. The, these half-lives, which are quantifiable measures of the degradation rates, are basically the same, 18 hours and 20, 21 hours, which also kind of correspond with previous literature that has looked at the half-life of PRPC. Uh, next up, we want to look at the degradation of PRP scrapie. So what we have to do is obviously infect them with this scrapie protein. Um, and just an example I can walk you through on the left. Uh, if we don't add docs, uh, there's, no, there's going to be no uh, PRPC production. And so we're not going to see any PRPSC that gets, that gets converted from that PRPC. And on the right, if we introduce it to normal brain homogenate, which, is, which doesn't have any prions in it, there's no infection. But when we're inducing the expression of PRPC with docs and introduce these prions, then we do see uh, this expression. So now we can use these cells to look at the effects of alacridar on the half-life. Um, on the left, you see the control group. And on the right, these are uh, cells treated with alacridar. And you can see that over time, there is less staining in, uh, of protein in the alacridar condition. So although we have a couple of reasons to um, actually question the uh, kind of verify, the, ver the veracity of this data, uh, we can see that there is some effect of alacridar on the rate of PRP scrapie de degradation. The half-life goes down, uh, which means that there's going to be a shorter time for uh, half of the protein to decay. Um, from 67 hours to 24 and a half. So this project, uh, what I did is I created these cell lines. Um, I characterized them with a lot of uh, sort of seeing if our uh, cells worked and were able to be controlled with docs. Um, they were. Um, I found which system uh, was best for these cells. So between the earlier B5 cells and the later C1 cells. We know that alacridar increases the degradation rate of PRP scrapie, and this is, uh, does not work by uh, decreasing the levels of PRPC. So experiments are in progress to really determine this effect. So because we know that um, there's, there are some questions, we could repeat this. Um, there's also uh, further experiments in the lab. This, uh, we're trying to look at the biological basis of antiprion activity, so the mechanisms of how that works, and also what normally happens during toxicity. So if we find out more, then we can indicate these future therapeutic targets, for example, these cell signaling pathways that we know PRPSE affects. So in the future, of course, what's first important is kind of to repeat that experiment to really nail down if it works or not. Um, next up, uh, halting cell division is uh, something that might work because in non-dividing cells, alacridar was seen to have a different uh, effect. And so we might look at the half-life in those cells. Um, and of course, this cell line is useful as a tool. We can use it to different effects of other antiprion drugs just uh, using the same methods. Um, and we're also using it in the lab to determine the degradation rates of other prion strains. So besides that 22L one I showed, there are different uh, sort of strains of prions that have different uh, properties. So I'd just like to thank my lab members um, and thank you for coming out. Any questions? Okay, thank you, that was wonderful. Um, do we have any questions in the crowd? Thank you for the presentation. Um, I just have a quick question about uh, the amount of, so do you know if the drug actually does anything to other proteins in the cell other than the PRPC? So we do know that um, alacridar is uh, is actually an uh, anti-cancer drug. Uh, so it's used in these different chemotherapeutic cocktails. It affects this sort of like multi-drug resistant um, like protein pump. Um, we know that, I mean, the most important effect is that um, we're trying to look at what it does to prion disease. Um, if, we, if we're able to determine um, these sort of effects on our prion proteins, 
that we might be able to uh, eventually investigate sort of like what uh, cells, are, what other parts of the cell are affected in order to create that effect. I think we have time for one more question, if anyone's got something. Um, in the Western, was there any like logic behind the two and a half micromolar for the alacridar oh, concentration? Yes. Is that like standard dosing or? Yes, so um, I don't have this data um, on the slide here, but in previous research, we found that um, a 2.5 micromolar concentration was uh, like a curative dose essentially in our N2A cells. Gotcha. Thank you so much to Tim and everyone who asked questions. We've got about five minutes until our next presentation.